What's up everyone? This is Travis here with Fish and Hex. Thank you for tuning in for another video. I appreciate it as always. And in this one, I'm going to talk about and show you how to use a refractometer. Now this is the only method that I currently use to test salinity in my reef tank. Now I have used uh, methods such as the hydrometers, uh, the little, uh, little cup thingamajigger that you dip in the water and it has a little lever there. Can't remember the name. I know it's a hydrometer. I can't remember the other name of it. Um, but it's been a long, long time. And uh, I have since moved on to bigger, better things. And uh, those two devices, the uh, the bobber and that other device, is just not what I'm looking for at this time. So, uh, what's next? You know, if you're starting out with that, what can you do? What can you upgrade to? And uh, a refractometer is the next step. Now, it's about uh, thirty dollars or so, uh, depending on where you buy it. Uh, BRS is about thirty bucks. Now, this is a kit, and in this kit, you'll get the refractometer. You'll get a screwdriver, which allows you to adjust it when you calibrate it. Little dipper here for water. I believe that comes with it. It's been a long time. And uh, a bottle of calibration fluid. Now, note the calibration solution. You have to calibrate it to 1.026. Do not calibrate it to zero. I've had people in the past calibrate to zero and then start dumping salt in their tank. Uh, it can be very, very bad if you accidentally uh, calibrate to zero. Because most people think when you calibrate it, uh, zero would be kind of where you, you know, when you calibrate things. So it makes sense, but just be aware uh, you're not going to do it with this one. All right. So. Uh, I'll put a picture up so you know what I'm talking about when it comes to calibrating. Now, uh, what you're going to do when you first get it is uh, go ahead and uh, I always like to clean off a paper towel here somewhere. Um, clean off the actual lens itself every, before I use it every time, even before I calibrate it. Um, go ahead and uh, you're going to take your calibration fluid here. And uh, I some people can put a drop, but I like to put put a little line here. Makes a little puddle. All right, and then you're just going to slowly lower this down. Uh, ensuring that there's no air bubbles all right that's just the best way to do it now you can see here I open it up you see where the air bubbles are okay um, you can adjust it you know try to get those air bubbles out all right and then you're gonna hold it up to the light itself uh, then you're gonna use this little end here to adjust it to your uh, vision to make sure it focuses in for you and then you take your little screwdriver here and you adjust it up and down to get it to 1.026 now once you're there um, I like to recalibrate mine every couple weeks. It's just a habit. Um, I only use it, you know, every so often, maybe once a week, maybe at the minimum. Usually only when around water changes is when I test my water uh, because I have the salinity probe on the apex, so I kind of really don't mess with it anymore. Plus, the auto top off has been, you know, working well. So uh, there really is no need to test my tank salinity uh, any more than like a, every other week or something like that. Now, uh, ensure that. Uh, you, it's calibrated every so often to make sure that you have the proper reading and then uh, you know make sure it's cleaned before you put it away uh, I know with mine over time I've you know left water around here and it's kind of like rusted up so uh, but it's been over geez it's been like two years since I've had this so um, it's uh, it's done you know it's done its job and it's holding up quite well now uh, this one's pretty heavy I know that you can get some on eBay that are like really really light and uh, I have noticed with them that I've had clients that have had them, like the cheaper ones, like they're like 10 bucks or so, you kind of get what you pay for, okay? Now, I, feel, I believe that sometimes when things are heavier, uh, they're, they're better built. So be aware, if you buy something cheap, you might have to calibrate it more often to get an accurate reading. So just be aware of that when purchasing your refractometer. I recommend go to BRS. That's uh, where I get mine. One quick tip, guys, when you are taking your reading, I like to use the same light every time. Now, in this room, I have an LED that seems to work very well. Um, I have noticed, uh, believe it or not, I would if I take the same sample and I test it in here and I test it in the kitchen light or I test it in the bathroom, the reading isn't the same because the light intensity is different. So I kind of get it, it. It looks like I get a different reading. It's not really that much off, but it's just not the same. And, and you'll know what I'm talking about once you start using one. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, the lane, the line is like faded. It doesn't. Uh, it's not as clear as it should be depending on the light intensity. So find a consistent light that works well for you and just continue to use that. Uh, when you take your reading. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment section below, or you can contact me on the Fish of Hex Facebook page. Either way, it works for me. And uh, as always, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.